Hey, what is going on? It is Crypto Bobby, and today I wanted to make a video for the folks that are new to the crypto world who are trying to buy their first altcoin or trying to find their first altcoin exchange. Maybe you just started getting into cryptocurrency, you just bought your first Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, perhaps on something like Coinbase, maybe on something like Gemini, or on whatever local exchange that allows you to take fiat and move that into cryptocurrency like Bitcoin or Ethereum. If you are new if you're advanced or if you're more advanced in the cryptocurrency world if you've been trading for quite some time this video probably isn't the best fit for you so i'd recommend just going to the next one but this is specifically for the newbies who are looking to get into cryptocurrency or looking to be able to move into altcoins or alternative investments other crypto assets besides kind of the simple bitcoin and ethereum and there are two altcoin exchanges that i primarily recommend one is bitrex I've actually made a video about Bittrex before. If we pop over here into the Bittrex markets, I made a video about Bittrex before, which I'll link to below about how you can buy your first altcoins utilizing Bittrex. But outside of that, um, one thing that I, I definitely would say about Bittrex is while I use Bittrex, probably about 50%, maybe about 50% of my altcoins, the other 50% I use for Binance. And for people that are new to the space, one issue that's happening right now with Bittrex is it's become so popular that they're shutting down new user registration as of the time of recording this. That might change by the time you're watching this. But with Bittrex, they're shutting down new user registration and it's becoming harder and harder to uh, register. It's becoming harder to get your ID verified and all that good stuff. Bitch, or Binance, on the other hand, is a newer uh, crypto exchange, but it has quickly taken a massive market share. And... I like Binance for a number of reasons. Number one, they are accepting new users. So if you're new to the cryptocurrency space, Bittrex might not be the best fit for you right now because they might not be accepting new users. Um, so Binance is accepting new users. Number two, from an ID verification place, I know a lot of newbies are not fans of ID verification. It takes a long time. The software doesn't always work. Binance does not require you to start off with ID verification. You can actually withdraw two Bitcoin worth of cryptocurrency on a daily basis with Binance. So as of the time of recording this, that's about $30,000 plus a day. I mean, that's a lot of money that you can potentially withdraw with Binance. So I want to walk you through just at a high level what the deal is with Binance, kind of why it's, why it's, why it's a pretty good place to trade altcoins and how you can utilize it to buy, sell, trade uh, your crypto assets, maybe outside of Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, uh, those type of, you know, those type of things. Now, if you are new, if you don't have a Binance account yet, I'll have a link below. Uh, it's cryptobobby.com slash Binance. It's a referral link, but if you sign up, I uh, would definitely appreciate the support going through that link. If not, no big deal. Uh, but I really do appreciate your time and watching this video regardless. So thank you in advance for that. Now, when you look at Binance, like I said, it is an altcoin exchange. So or an alt crypto asset exchange. With that being said, you can't go, I can't take my US dollars and I can't say, okay, here's my debit card, here's my credit card. Um, I'm gonna buy Bitcoin or whatever cryptocurrency with that on Binance. But what you can do is you can send your Bitcoin, you can send your Ethereum, um, you can send really any cryptocurrencies to Binance that are available on Binance. You can send them to Binance, and then from there, you can trade those crypto assets. So the most common use case somebody will probably do is you might have a Coinbase account or a Gemini account. Let's say you buy Ethereum on Coinbase. You buy one Ethereum on Coinbase. What you would end up doing is you would be able to, you would go to the, your funds, you would deposit uh, you would deposit your funds, uh, you would deposit your Ethereum into your Ethereum wallet. And then from there, you could pop into the ETH markets and start trading for uh, certain things. So in the case of right now, Bitcoin Cash is going nuts. Um, Bitcoin Cash is going nuts. IOTA is all over the place. But we'll pop over to Bitcoin Cash and we can take a look at what's happening there. So I have a very, very small balance of, very small balance of Ethereum. So not, not too much, not too much ETH there. But when you're looking at this, what once you send your Ethereum or your Bitcoin, so if it's a Bitcoin trading pairing, you could send Bitcoin there. But a lot of people choose to send Ethereum because typically it's a little bit faster and the fees might be lower for the time being in terms of trading. So you would send your Ethereum to this address and it would go into your wallet. And then from there, you would have three different options when it comes to trading uh, for new cryptocurrency. You can obviously scroll through here, find whatever cryptocurrency you like. And obviously there's there's quite a number of them. And one of the big benefits to Binance over Bittrex as well, 
Bittrex is headquartered in the U.S., uh, and they've recently come under a lot of regulatory and legal pressure as far as adding potential tokenized uh, securities. So Binance is not headquartered in the U.S., and they've been a little bit more liberal in terms of adding new coins quickly. So if you're trying to find new crypto assets to trade, Typically, Binance will have them before, typically, not always, but typically Binance will have them before Bittrex. So something to, you know, something to consider. But as you go through this, and one of the nice things about Binance as well is they have three distinct types of orders that you can utilize. You can use limit orders, market orders, and stop limit orders. Not every exchange has this. Bittrex does not have this for the time being. And this is advantageous for two, for a couple different reasons. Number one, if you are just like, if you want to go through a very simple process and you don't want to worry about what a limit order is or what a stop limit order is, you can simply pop into market and you could say, hey, I want to buy, uh, you know, maybe 50% of this isn't a great thing because I don't have enough. Uh, I don't have enough Ethereum here, but we'll pop over to so we'll pop over to Bitcoin and we'll pop over to ZRX. And so right now, let's just say I have so I have close to 2500 ZRX in my account. So if I want to say I want to sell, like, let's say I want to sell 100 ZRX at the first available order that I can sell them at, and I'm not even going to have to determine the price. I'm just whatever the market gives me, that's what the market price is. I can sell that ZRX at that. I'll click sell. That'll succeed. Alternatively, if I want to buy anything, I can use that, that Bitcoin that I just utilized, and I can buy at a specific price point so i can limit the price point that i want to buy at so if i want to buy at a dip i can put it in i can put in an order below where things are at right now and wait till that dips to buy in beforehand and then lastly one of the nice things about binance as well as the concept of stop limit orders which are also on gdax if you're not familiar with that but essentially what it allows you to do is to put an order in place whether it's buying or if it's selling and now, let's say I have a, you know, we like I said here, we have a, a good amount of ZRX and I am scared right now that the market is going to collapse. The ZRX market is going to collapse. And if it goes under a certain price point, the, the you know, the, the floor is going to fall out from underneath it and it's going to dip like crazy. So I want to sell another hundred ZRX. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to look at the last price and I'm going to say, okay, the last price was... Um, point zero 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 three four two. So the stop that I want to put in place is going to be point zero 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 three. And if it goes below that price, it is automatically going to trigger a market order. But what's going to happen is that depending upon, we're going to place a limit to where we'll sell it at. So if the, the crash falls really, really fast and things go nuts, then you know, maybe we're not going to sell it if it goes all the way down, you know, we're not going to sell that. So we might say, okay, you know, if it goes below 0 0.0003 Bitcoin per, per ZRX, then I'll sell that. Except if my order does not go through before, let's say 0 0.0025, then I don't want to sell it. I want to hold on to it. So it'll try to sell it between the stop and the limit order. And that way, you know, you'll be hopefully covered. If not, you'll hold on to it because the market is falling too fast and maybe think it's going to recover, whatever it might be. So stop limit orders are um, really an interesting tool there as well. But you have the flexibility to either get very simplistic with your orders, with your buy orders and your sell orders, but just using a market order. If you're brand new to the crypto world, this is the easiest place to get started. After, you know, a time or two of familiarity, you can start using limit orders. And then lastly, you know, if you want to get a little bit more complex in terms of your trading, you can use stop limit orders as well. So this is, um, you know, once it reaches a specific price and you can see there's Binance is, is fairly good in terms of having a help section. So we can see a little bit more about kind of what this means, how to use a stop limit order. Um, and this gives you a little bit more instruction. And this is a newer piece of functionality to Binance. So they've been doing a nice job there as well. And then lastly, you know, as we're kind of looking at all, you know, as we're looking at all this stuff, I would say a few different things. So number one with, you know, with any of these altcoins, um, you always want to do your research before buying anything. Um, that is absolutely crucial. You always want to you always want to do your research. It is extremely helpful in many respects. And there are a lot of choices here. You can see the number of pairings that they have from a Bitcoin pairing, from an Ethereum pairing. And they also have the concept of BNB, which is the Binance token, essentially. And that, if you utilize BNB when you're trading, that actually provides you with a 50% discount on fees. 
So if you're trading quite a bit, if you have a lot of fees, the BNB token will provide you a discount. Utilizing that as a trade pairing will provide you a, a nice discount uh, as well. So that's kind of another interesting thing there. But this is just a very high level overview. Hopefully this was helpful for you and, and he helps to shed some light as far as how you can go through the process of acquiring your first crypto assets, your first altcoins outside of Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, utilizing Binance. Uh, and again, you can. there are a million other altcoin exchanges out there. Um, I've used Bittrex. I still use Bittrex, but I've been around for a while. So I have you know full ID verification, everything like that within it. Um, there's also the concept of uh, you know, there's also Poloniex, there's also things like Ether Delta, there's decentralized exchanges, there's Shapeshift, there are a number of different exchanges, but Binance is one of the ones that I, I do like. And then one of the last things I will say as well, is that while I do like Binance, um, I do like Binance, I do like Bittrex, it's always recommended to not keep your crypto on an exchange for an extended period of time. That is something that I would definitely recommend, uh, is whether you're getting a Ledger Nano S, if you're getting a Treasure, uh, if you have some type of other wallet, if you have paper wallets, whatever it might be, keeping your money on exchanges is not a security best practice. So keep that in mind. I use Binance personally for trading and then I get my money off the exchange. I trade, put it on, get my money off the exchange. So uh, that's something you, you wanna keep in mind. While I am a big fan of Binance, while I'm a big fan of also Bittrex and a lot of the other exchanges out there, uh, it's not a security best practice to keep your money on those exchanges. So always just be smart about things. Don't leave your money on exchanges. Use two-factor authentication, all that good stuff. And hopefully, again, this video was helpful for you. Shed some light into Binance, how you can utilize it, some of the differentiators. As far as for newbies, why this might be helpful for you and why it might be good. And again, uh, the link below, CryptoBobby.com slash Binance. Uh, that is, like I said, it's a referral link. So it'll help me out if you end up signing up through that, but you don't have to, I, hopefully, uh, this was helpful for you. And I really do appreciate the time crypto Bobby signing out. Peace.